Hello and welcome to part 12 of this Oshkosh journey. This day marked the end of our family time in Minnesota. We were up at 5 a.m. and about to start our journey back west in earnest. We traveled so far on this day that I've actually split the day into two videos, so keep an eye open for part 13 to finish the day off. Okay, six o'clock at Buffalo. We got sunset on the, uh, the rudders there. And it's beautiful, a beautiful morning here. Sad to leave Grandma Jan and Uncle Ron, but also quite excited for the trip. So Diane and Charles are here. Support crew. Okay. Here comes the sun. All right, leaving Buffalo. 6.30 in the morning, nice sunrise. All right, the 40. Parking brake is on, header tank is... Wing tanks are... Here's the bridge. And we're good to go. Buffalo traffic, Silver Air Coupe is departing uh, runway 18. Uh, departure to the west. It's gonna be heavy. We got thick air. Quite a bit of power in the engine. Where it's 800 feet. There we go. 60. Climb out. I'll make a right turn out over this lake. Temperatures and pressures look good. Actually, I'll do a left turn, just capture it on camera. So, I'm going to fly out over Grandma Jan's house. Wow, that's really beautiful, that mist. Bye-bye, Grandma Jen and Uncle Ron.
going past the town of uh, Litchfield, Minnesota. Seven o'clock. In the air about 15 minutes or so. It's a beautiful morning, lots of people out on their lakes uh, fishing by the looks of it. <laughs> Most lakes seem to have one boat out there. Zero wind. 97 miles an hour over the ground. They're making pretty good progress. And it's beautiful. What a privilege to be able to do this. American 1395, contact Minneapolis Center, 119.72. 1172, American 1395. Delta 1175, contact Minneapolis Center, 119.72. 1972, Delta 1175. Just amazing, the uh, expanse here, amount of land. Oh, that's a 469, Minneapolis Center, Roger. Number of farms. Crazy. As far as I can see, what's this up ahead is just not rain. I don't think so. Actually, it could be. Doesn't look like it'll be much of a factor, though. We're just going to skirt the north edge of this before we get to Watertown. That's okay. 90 miles on away. One twelve contact Minneapolis Center on one three four point two five. All right. Well, we're we're coming up on uh, Watertown here. We're in South Dakota now. Or over it. Weather's brightened up a little bit. Weather's off to the south there. Pretty good ahead. I think I see the lakes of Watertown. A little shot over the wing here for you. So a little bit hillier than uh, Minnesota. And I think the ground has come up about 500 feet since we left Buffalo. Winds appear to be calm. Let's check the weather. Five Zulu. Wind one three zero at zero four. Visibility one zero. Sky condition broken one zero thousand. Watertown Municipal Airport. Okay. So uh, looks like there's a little bit of wind now. Uh, Romy one two. Would work for that. It was one three at four knots. We'll choose one two. But yeah, the landscape is different. It doesn't look like Minnesota anymore. Okay, so what else we got? Uh, pattern altitude is 2,700. We can descend a little bit. Check the car beat. Seem like there's any ice. Good to stretch the old legs. Going for an hour and a half or so. Not long. We'll pick up some fuel and uh, maybe grab a quick coffee and then get back in the air. Heading west. So I guess I can see the field there. I can see some hangars, I think. We should be able to do a nice... Actually, what's the... Right pattern? No, all left. Yeah. So we'll just join on the 45. Or 1 2. Left traffic. Set up nicely for that. Alright, 10 miles out, that's cool. Check the frequency 12305. 12305. Watertown. Watertown traffic. Silver Air Coupe is 10 miles to the east. Inbound for landing, Watertown. Watertown traffic, Silver Air Coupe is on a 5 mile 45, left traffic 1 2, Watertown. Big airfield.
7,000 foot runways. Yeah, wonder why that is. Probably wartime. Maybe bombers or something. Traffic in Watertown. How's your radio coming in? Is that clear? Yeah, you're pretty clear. You kind of broke up a little while ago, but you're clear now. Thank you. Watertown traffic, Silver Air Cooper's on a left downwind for Romy 1-2, Watertown. What's that down there? Ag? Or something? Yeah, I think they are. Ag aircraft audio, 727 down there. Old FedEx one, maybe? Well, that's used for training. All right, so we'll beam the numbers down to 1500 RPM, nose drops. Five hundred feet per minute descent. We get a little way out here, turn base. That looks about good. Watertown traffic, Silver Air Coupe turning left base, runway 12, Watertown. Silver Echo turning final runway 1 2 Watertown. Alright, let's try and land on the center line. Light crosswind, on the left. Birds across the runway. Well, that, that's on the center line. Yeah, I can do it, Andrew. Big old runway. Oh look, it's our fuel. Watertown traffic, Silver Air Coop is off runway 1-2, Watertown. Alright, getting some fuel in uh, Watertown, South Dakota. Seems like a very nice FBO, good facilities. Massive airport. I'm guessing there's some World War II history here. And it's got this cool little observation deck up here. Nice little pilot's lounge here. Pretty cool. 12 gallons is what we're putting in here. All right, well, I think we're all fueled up. I'll go and check that out. Check for water and all that. Quantity and uh, finish my coffee and we'll get going. Even a bed here. Water down traffic, Silver Air Coupe is departing Rummy 1-2. Uh, straight out departure, water down.
Well, that was a good stop. Quick and efficient. Ah. Well, there's some weather issues. Yeah, the current situation is Pierre looks like I'm not going to be able to get in there. Um, not a lot of options north or south, so I think it's going to be stopping along the way and, and waiting this out. Pierre is currently overcast at 1400. There's not a lot of margin, so... Forecast is saying... It's going to get better later in the day, 8 o'clock, it's going to be uh, 25,000 foot ceiling, so... Sometime that's going to be lifting. So I guess we'll wait. And... We can wait. Um... How far along? Maybe two-thirds of the way along my route into Pierre. Villa, South Dakota. Currently showing... Well, unfortunately, it doesn't give me a... Rainbow traffic, got at 4 5 Delta, we have two open canopies. It doesn't give me a ceiling, which is unfortunate, but it gives me 10 miles visibility there. No, they're not giving me a lot of information. South Dakota. Going at two and a half thousand foot overcast. Not super great, but that's okay. We got three hours of fuel or so, so I can definitely see the band. It's, it's interesting, it's also not showing that band on the, any of the radars that I see. Luckily, it's good internet here. What are the other options? The other option... The Huron is over there. I think we're going to try... We're going to try Miller. If that doesn't work, we turn back to uh, Huron. If that doesn't work, we come back out here and just go back to... Uh, Watertown. Yeah, 110 miles an hour, so... Something to consider too. We're going to be a lot slower on the way back. We have to turn around. Back to that into fuel considerations. Huron Regional Airport, Huron, South Dakota. Automated weather observation 1444 Zulu. Wind 110 at 10. Visibility 10. Sky condition overcast 2200. Heat. Lights are on, trim is set, extras rich. Miller traffic, silver air coupe turning uh, final for runway 15. Miller, full stop. Crosswind from the left. So a nice tailwind. Oh, we're going to center line again, are we? Yep. Let's do center line. I'm joking. Please aim for it. Raising. Silver at Cooper's off, runway 15, Miller. Okay, well we're on the ground, which is good. Don't really want to be up there anymore. Uh, ceilings are definitely coming down, a little bit of rain. 
big tailwind uh, so I think it was good to come down well, I'll go in and have a look study the weather and see what's up in Pierre see if that has any see how that's looking it looked like it was going to be improving through the day so hopefully that's what it does I'll have a look around here see you in a bit Miller traffic, Silver Echo, we're departing runway 15, we'll be uh, departing to the west. Miller. That's not too bad. I've got a decent amount of space above me for the cloud base. Follow the railway tracks. That has some good wind behind me, 110 mo over the ground. See those uh, turbines over there turning, pretty good rate. Another airport, high more on the way before we get to Pierre. If I get to Pierre, that's good. Keep an eye on these ceilings. Plenty of fuel, three quarters of the wing tanks. High more, there is high more. Good. There's even some blue sky, so that's good. I'm pretty low here. That's looking better. We got it made. One zero at zero six. Visibility one zero. Sky condition overcast two thousand three hundred. Temperature two four Celsius. Dew point one eight Celsius. Altimeter three zero zero seven. Remarks. Density altitude three thousand. Pier Municipal Airport. Automated weather observation 1641 one. Zulu. Wind 010 zero one zero at 06. Zero 010 six. Zero zero at 06. Well, that's definitely some different type of flying to California. It's not blue skies. With a bit of wind. And heat. It's low ceilings. It's low ceilings, that's what it is. 16 miles. I think I can see the river, maybe? Yeah, traffic. Silver Air Coupe is uh, 10 miles east, inbound for landing. Yeah. Common traffic advisory frequency at pier is 122.7. Thank you. Yeah, traffic. Silver Air Coupe turning left base on my 3 1. Yeah. You have me in sight there, Skywagon. Yeah, we're just off your uh, right wing. Well, extend long. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. The 
Pierre traffic, Silver Ecoop turning final, runway 31, Pierre. Clear traffic, 7JP, left base, 31. Pier traffic, Skywagon, final 3-1. Pier traffic, uh, Silver Air Coupe is off 3-1, yeah. Just got in here at Pier, Pier, I think you meant to say, Pier, North Dakota. And uh, topped up the tanks. Let's see if we can make it into Rapid City. That's the next next goal. Bit of weather out there, but, uh, not too bad in the end. So that was the first half of this busy travel day, Buffalo, Minnesota to Pierre, South Dakota. More weather problems, some great scenery, and even dinosaurs coming up in the next half of the day in part 13. But before we get to that, here's a catch up on Diane and Charles's day. Charles and I left from Buffalo that morning to visit Pipestone National Monument in Southern Minnesota. We tried to see the museum at Granite Falls Airport. Unfortunately, we were an hour too early and it was closed. And we thought we were going to come here. There's a museum here. Mm -hmm. What can we see here? We're going to see some airplanes. Any particular type? I think we're going to see a B-25. Nice little mouse. It's a tiny little mouse. Don't let him touch you. I know. So you don't want... He's sleeping there. Oh, he's breathing. He's cute, isn't he? Native American Indians have quarried and carved the red pipestone at Pipestone National Monument for centuries, and there are still active quarries there today. Charles and I walked the Circle Trail, paying close attention to both the geology and the plants along the way, as he was working on a junior ranger badge for the park. The bedrock exposed at the monument is known as Sioux Quartzite, which consists of three layers, and the clay layer, known as Pipestone, is a unique variety called catlinite. The red color of the pipestone is caused by traces of the iron-bearing mineral hematite and is roughly the hardness of a fingernail and therefore can be carved with simple tools. It was a great trail going through native tall grass prairie, pipestone quarries, historical markers, and even a waterfall. Thank you for joining us on our adventure on both land and in the air. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell button to receive notifications of new videos. See you next time.